So we're looking at de-individuation as an explanation of human aggression. So that again, this falls under the social psychological explanations of aggression alongside social learning theory and the frustration aggression hypothesis. So the idea of this explanation is that people engage in aggressive behaviour when they lose their sense of identity. So when they become a part of a large group. Now, that loss of identity can cause them to behave more aggressively and lose their self-awareness and their inhibitions. So people are less worried about their actions being judged by others, which can cause them to engage in antisocial behaviour such as aggression because they lose their inhibitions. So anything that causes your anonymity to be reduced causes your inner strength, restraints to be reduced and increases the chances of aggressive behaviour. Now, Zimbardo argued that being part of a crowd can diminish your awareness of your own individuality. So you become faceless, you are less identifiable, you become, become anonymous. Now, conditions that increase that also increase that antisocial behaviour. Now that can help why explain why people engage in riots and football hooliganism. So if we were to look at some AO3 then, so some evaluation, there is supporting evidence. So Zimbardo studied a group of um, four female undergraduates at a time and they were required to give an electric shock to another student. Now half of them wore bulky lab um, coats and a hood that hid their face and they were never referred to by their name. So that was the de-individualized group. Now the other half wore normal clothes and were given a name tag. Now participants in the de-individuation condition shocked the learner twice as long as the control condition. So that strongly supports the assumptions that aggression increases when people are anonymous. So when you de-individualize someone, they are more likely to engage in aggressive and violent acts. Now, um, a massive weakness of that research is that it is gender bias. It only used females. So if we were to look at that testability bit at that bottom, it's estrocentric, only uses females. It's beta biased to apply it to males and females because it's minimizing those biological differences. Whereas um, research into hormonal mechanisms found that males might be more aggressive than females. So actually, there could be fundamental biological differences. Equally, when we look at some counter arguments, again, the theory is gender bias. It does not acknowledge that men and women may have differ in the aggressive uh, acts. So Diner found that males were more likely to behave aggressively under de-individuation conditions than females. So does it offer um, a complete explanation of human aggression for both genders? And equally, it is oversimplistic, it is reductionist. It ignores other theories that could explain human aggression, such as the biological approach. So it's arguing that environmental factors are more important. It's, it's disregarding that nurture, um, nature side of the net nature nurture debate is focusing on environmental influences rather than innate inborn biological factors. So again a 16 marker it's this outline and evaluate one social psychological explanation of aggression so it's not specifying that it has to be de-individuation but you could do it. Now this question is just saying one social psychological explanation so it's important that you do one. Equally, you could get a question in the future that might be outline and evaluate social psychological explanations or theories, which indicates that you probably have to do more than one. So I would always suggest that doing two would probably be easier than trying to do three, because obviously there's, there's more information to try and condense down. So if you were to do two, I would do one AO1 paragraph on one explanation, then evaluate it then do my AO1 of a second um, explanation and evaluate it to make sure that it flows a bit more logically than trying to do all of your AO1 together then evaluation makes it a bit harder when you're trying to relate back to a theory and it doesn't follow one from that explanation.